Come on, hurry up. There's something about lightning that makes it fascinating to watch, especially when it's far away and you know it can't hurt you. How do we know that this lightning is far away? Notice that you don't hear the thunder when you see the lightning. Several seconds go by. Then you hear the thunder. What causes thunder? Why does it come after the lightning? Lightning is a giant spark that jumps from cloud to cloud, or between a cloud and the ground. This spark heats the air, causing it to expand very fast. And the expanding air causes the sound of thunder. We get a similar sound from a firecracker. When a firecracker goes off, it burns rapidly, heating the air and causing it to expand with great violence. Let's set off another firecracker about 100 yards away. Notice that this time there will be a delay between the time you see the flash and hear the sound. If we set off another one, even farther away, there will be a still greater delay between the flash and the sound. Once again, only this time from a mile away. One, two, three, four, five. It takes about five seconds for sound to travel a mile. But light travels a mile almost instantly. Light moves at about 186,000 miles per second. You can tell how far away lightning is by counting seconds to find how long it takes before you hear the thunder. Seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 seconds, five seconds per mile. So the lightning is two miles away. Greg is glad of that because he knows that lightning can do damage. Greg has read about things lightning can do. Yes, lightning causes damage. Could it hurt Greg or Dad? Let's think of it about where lightning comes from and what it's likely to hit. Lightning comes from certain clouds called thunderheads. The formation of a thunderhead, shown here with fast motion photography, occurs when moist air is rapidly forced upwards by another mass of air. The rising air cools, and water vapor in the air condenses into droplets, which later fall as rain. In the process, the cloud becomes charged with static electricity. You know something about static electricity. Sometimes, when you rub your feet across a carpet, a charge of static electricity builds up on your body. When you bring your finger near something made of metal, the electricity passes from your body to the metal as a spark. You could hardly hear the spark because it was so small. A larger spark can be produced by an electrostatic generator, a machine that produces high voltage electricity. Sparks jump between the metal spheres as charges of thousands of volts of electricity are built up between them. Much greater charges are built up between clouds and the ground, causing lightning. But how do we know where lightning will strike? Well, remember that lightning is electricity. With the help of this meter, we can show that electricity flows through some substances more easily than through others. The meter shows that an electric current passes easily through a bar of copper. Metals are good conductors of electricity. Let's see if electricity will flow through water with salt dissolved in it. It does. Water with almost any mineral dissolved in it will conduct electricity.
This includes water in oceans, lakes, and streams. Let's see what happens when we place the wires against a piece of wood that's moist with sap. The moist wood also conducts electricity, although not quite so well as the copper or salt water. What about dry wood? Dry wood is not a good conductor. Neither is this piece of rubber. A poor conductor is not as likely to be hit by lightning as is a good conductor. A metal fence is so it is quite likely to be hit by lightning. A metal ferris wheel is a good conductor and is also likely to be hit by lightning. And so is a metal derrick, also likely to be struck. Lightning is likely to hit the metal frame of this building. But when people are inside, they won't be hurt because the metal will conduct the electricity safely into the ground. For protection from lightning, wood buildings such as barns often are equipped with a metal cable leading into the ground. The cable is run up the side of the barn and then along the roof to a metal lightning rod. Lightning is more likely to hit a metal rod, a good conductor, than the wood of the building, a poor conductor. The metal cable will conduct the electricity safely into the ground. Lightning rods are often placed on barns and on smokestacks and on other tall structures. That's because lightning is more likely to hit things high above the Earth's surface, as a smokestack or a tree or things on top of a hill. The higher the object, the closer it is to the clouds, and the more likely it is to be hit by lightning. So during a lightning storm, stay away from high places, so you won't be hit by lightning. If you're caught out in the open during a lightning storm, lie down, so you won't be the highest thing around. Remember that bodies of water also conduct electricity. So don't go swimming or ride in a boat during a lightning storm. What about being in a car during a lightning storm? Is it safe to be in a car? Yes, this is one of the best places to be. If lightning should hit the car, it would be conducted through the metal and jump to the ground, not hurting anyone inside. But lightning is extremely unlikely to hit the car because of the rubber wheels between the car body and the ground. Rubber, remember, is a very poor conductor of electricity. But what about Greg and Dad now? Are they safe from lightning? Look around outside their house. There's a tall tree nearby. If lightning comes close, it's more likely to hit the tree than the house. There's also a tall utility pole. If lightning is close, it's more likely to hit the utility pole than the house. But suppose there were no tall things nearby. Then mightn't it hit the house? It could. But where? It would be most likely to hit a metal gutter or pipe. Then it would be conducted to the ground. or perhaps it might hit the TV antenna. But the antenna has a metal grounding wire. The wire is connected to a metal pipe which leads into the ground. So even if lightning should hit Greg's house, it's unlikely that it would hit anyone in the house. So Greg and his dad are snug and dry and quite safe from the thunderstorm.